The more time I spend digging into PenPot, the more I really do appreciate this software. Not only for the fact that it's absolutely free, it's open source, but also because it's put together in a very intelligent way for us as web designers. Today, I want to show you two cool features that I think if you are looking for a tool like this or you're a Figma user and you're looking for these options without having to pay, PenPot could definitely be the right tool for you. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the ability to work with Flexbox and CSS Grid directly inside the editor. We can grab the code and we can do so much more with it. Let me give you a quick demonstration, but let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to create a more detailed tutorial on how you can use a lot more of these functions inside Penport. And if enough people are interested, I will absolutely create that video. Okay, so let's just jump over into Penport now and take a look. So if you're coming over from a tool like Figma, this is going to feel very, very familiar. It's very similar in the way that you build with it. Terminology might be a little different in some places, but like I say, I really do appreciate how well thought out this is. And I've been watching it over the last couple of years and it is growing in feature set and hopefully also in popularity. But let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a basically a board, which is like an art board in Figma. This is kind of what you set up for your screen and so on. So we'll select the board, we'll click and drag, and we can create a board. So you can see this is a board, simple as that. Let's zoom in a little bit. And now we can do other things with this. So first of all, if we come over to the left-hand side, we can open this up and set any of the presets that we want. But for this, let's keep it super simple. Let's set a width and a height, and we're going to create a button. I know it's a button, it's not that exciting, but what it's going to demonstrate are some of the principles of working with Flex and then later on CSS Grid and also components. So let's go and set this up to be a size that makes a bit more sense. At the moment, it's probably a little bit big. So we'll set this to be something like 150 pixels, and we'll say by 40 pixels. There we go. That's more big button size. Okay, so now we've done that, we can come over to the left-hand side and we can do things like change colors and so on. So let's go and set the background color of this. We'll set it to be a nice kind of blue color, a nice dark blue. There we go. Okay, cool. We'll also come up and we can set the border radius and so on. But before we do, let's change the mode that we're working in and set this up to work with Flex. To do that, super simple. There's a couple of ways you can approach it. You can right click and from there you can say add Flex layout or you can use the keyboard shortcut. Or if you want to, you can simply come over, choose the layout option from the right hand side and choose Flex layout from there. We'll come back to grid a little later. So we choose Flex. Once we do that, we've now converted this into a Flex-based object. Let's rename it from board and we'll just call this button, just for good housekeeping. So now what we can do is let's go and apply some rounded corners and so on. You could use tokens, and I created a video on tokens. I'll link that in the description down below. And if you want to use tokens, consider these like CSS variables and you wanted to create a sort of framework using these variables, you could absolutely do that. Check out that video. And again, if you want me to include that in a video where we create and use all these kinds of tools together, let me know below. Okay, so now we've set this up as a Flex item. We now get all these additional options. And if you've used Flexbox, these are going to be very familiar to you. So before we start playing about with those, let's do a couple of things. Let's First of all, let's just create some typography. Let's click outside here and let's put some text in. We'll set this to be white. And as you can see, we now have some text and we have this button object on the left hand side. But watch now, once we drag this inside there, it immediately snaps to the top left hand corner. If I try to drag it to another position inside here, it snaps back to the top left corner. Why? Because it's a Flexbox based object. So now we can use those Flex options. So if we click on the button, so we grab the board, we now have those layout options and we can start to utilize these in various different ways. So we've got our alignment options. You're going to align it to the center. So you can see vertically that's now aligned to the center. Or do it horizontally. Click. There you go. We've now centered that item by using the flex model. You've got options for forward, reverse, set to columns, rows. Those options are here using these simple arrows. So what I did, let's make this just smaller. Let's squish this down and you see once we go too far, we just kind of have like a mask effect to this. So let's address that first of all. Let's squish this up so it kind of overlaps things. Let's come down and take a look at the flex board. At the moment, we're using the standard options, which is the flex width and the flex height. So we can basically just size it as we see fit. And as you can see, that sets the values up here. So 42 by 17 pixels. 
But if we change that over now to fit content horizontal and vertical, you'll see what happens is it now fits that content inside the button and we lose the values up inside there. They grayed out because we're using that kind of flexibility that we have by using those options. So now what we can do is we can start to use padding and margins and things like that. So we've got vertical padding. So let's just set some inside there. Let's say we'll put eight, stick it to an eight pixel grid, for example, hit the enter. We now have eight pixels above and eight pixels below. Let's go to the next one, set this to be 16. So now if we take a look, we've got the fit content horizontal and vertical. We now have a button with padding inside it that will fit the content inside this. So for example, if we change this and we put this is a button. It now expands accordingly. Simple as that. And then you can come back to your button and we can do things like apply rounded corners. So we'll do four on there. So we now got our very nice rounded corners. So there's the basics. Pretty cool. You're probably thinking, okay, that's kind of useful, but nothing groundbreaking. How does this actually help me as a web designer? Let me show you. We've got the option for inspect. If we open this up, You've got info, and what this does is this shows you exactly what's going on inside that flex model. This is cool. So if you were handing this off to a designer or you were designing something inside you, and then you want to make this a reality, you may be thinking, oh, what values did I use for this? And what spacing did I use and padding and those kinds of things? It's all there for you. Your border radius is inside you, your height, your width, both set to auto, so we can see it's flex. We can see it's display flex, the direction, any wrapping that's going on, how we've aligned things, the content, the padding. If we come into code, let's expand this out a little bit so we can see a bit better. We now have all the CSS and the HTML and SVG code. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to take all of this because it doesn't make a lot of sense in some cases, but you could easily grab what you need. So, for example, we don't care about the font face because that would be set up inside our style. Well, with theme style, you don't care about the body and all those kinds of things. But when it comes to the button, um, again, because we've named this button as opposed to just being, you know, bored or something, we now have all the options inside there in CSS. So while you might not want to take all these, like the Z index and so on, because it's kind of using it in context to the design that we have here, not the design we'd have if we were building this out as part of an actual design web page kind of thing. I mean, it makes sense, but it does have the key information you need. So you don't care about minimum height and width, but things like the padding, the justified content, the overflow, the display, the border radius, background color, and all those kinds of things, you could easily grab all that. If you were using variables, for example, you could easily change this background and just pull in the variable that you use inside your style guide, inside your sort of CSS framework, whatever you're using. So this in itself speeds things up considerably. The other cool thing about actually working this way, let's go back to the info, where we see anything like this, like this padding, for example. But let's say you were using something like VS Code to actually code this information, or you were just customizing the CSS, and those types of things. Well, when we copy this, we don't just copy those values. Let me just open up a note a second. So we open up a text editor or VS Code or anything like that and paste that in it actually pulls in the CSS definition as well, not just the values. So you could easily use this to speed up everything you're doing. And this holds true no matter what you're actually selecting from this info panel. So for example, we've got the colors, copy that, paste it in, there's your background. Grab the border radius, there's your border radius. So you don't even have to worry about the syntax you're going to use for any of that. And again, if you use something like bricks, you could easily use this by using the CSS panel in bricks. So if we grab this, for example, open up the CSS editor inside bricks, select the button, apply the root to it, paste that content in, and boom, you now have all that code pulled in for you. So you can design inside Penpot, and then you can grab that CSS code that you want to use and use that inside whatever tool you're using to build your website, bricks, anything at all that allows you to put CSS code into it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And as you can see, you've got a lot of options inside you for your alignment. So all the things you used to see in inside Flexbox, it's all available to you here. So what we can also do with this is you can select all of this and we could then easily convert this into a component. We now have a button component, which we can use over and over and over again. If we make changes to this, all of them will reflect those changes. Components are just super useful. Okay, so that's the button. Let's take a quick look at the options we have for CSS Grid. Now, like I said, before I go any further, there are still lots and lots more available to you when working with the Flex model here. This is just basically showing you 
the options that are available to you and how you can effectively just start using them. So let's create another board. Let's zoom out a little bit, make it a bit bigger. So we'll make our board. There we go. So we'll select our board and we're going to come over and change our layout. And this time we're going to choose the grid layout. Once we do that, we now get a kind of two by two grid. If we click on edit grid, we can now have a visual way in which we can edit this. You want to add more rows or columns in? Not a problem. Just click to add them in. Want to change the values inside you and move things around? All those things can be done. It's very, very simple. You'll also notice that it gives you the information over on the right hand side. And again, if we come into inspect, you can see there's all the options set up for this. If you go into the code, you can see inside there, there's our board and all the bits and pieces, the grid template rows, columns, and so on. So you can visually create it and then grab the code should you want to use it and use it wherever you want to use it. Or just take a look at the values that are being used and transition that over into whatever tool you're using that allows you to work with CSS, Grid, and Flexbox, and so on. Okay, so while we've got this open, let's take a very quick look. We can grab the button. We can make a copy of that. And we'll pop that inside you, and you'll see it immediately snaps in the same way the Flex does. So that's now snapped inside our CSS grid. And at which point, you can then come into your grid. So we can select our board, which is our grid. So let's rename that. There we go. So again, let me select the board. If you want to edit your grid, you can do that inside you. It shows you all the info. You can easily add more inside you if you want to. You can, again, do things like spacing, your alignment. So you can align things how you want. If you go to the top, you can see there's our grid layout. So we can choose whether we want this to like horizontal, vertical, you know, you kind of get the idea. You want to align things to the center, not a problem. You can do that. And again, depending upon how you build the actual component you want to put inside there, whether you want to have this to sort of expand and so on, all those things can be taken care of. If you want to handle things like padding and margins and row gaps and so on, again, all can be done inside here. So for example, there's our row gap. So we'll set that to be 12. Our column gap, we'll set that to be 12. There's your spacing all set up inside there. You've also got your vertical pad in, which you can open up and have horizontal vertical pad in, so you can control each side independently. So you can say we'll have eight, the top and bottom, eight on the sides, get the idea. You can also open out these columns and rows, and inside there you'll see exactly what's going on. So you can work with fractions, auto, percentage, and so on. So again, you can set this up to expand and cover various different parts. So it's all simple and straightforward. It's all very visual. You know, this is the nice thing with it, that it is a very visual way of working. But if you want to design and you want to grab that information and use that in whatever tool you want, this, I think, is a really cool way of working. It's using the same terminology that we're used to. It's working with CSS Grid. It's working with Flexbox. It's working with all the kind of setups, working with fractions, FRs, percentages, auto widths, and so on. You can use this in a much more intelligent fashion as a web designer. But this is just the basics. This is just showing you some of the things you can do with it. If you'd like me to create a more in-depth tutorial showing you how we can design various different parts of a website, how we can utilize things like tokens, Flexbox, CSS Grid, and so on, to give us that ability to create a flexible design, let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully, though, this has whet your appetite for what you can do with PenPod. I would 100% encourage you to go over, sign up for a free account, get stuck in, watch some tutorials, mine or anybody else's, see how you can use it. And I'm pretty sure that once you get to grips with it, you'll love it. Anyway, that's enough from me today. All applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. And if you want to grab more information about PenPod, check out these videos. Take care. I'll see you next time. Thank you.